Is freedom of the press coming under assault in the Northern Marianas? KSPN takes a look at the implications of the government's efforts to compel one reporter and her news company to turn over unpublished notes and recordings. On April 5th, the Marianas Variety and Variety reporter Tammy Doty were served with subpoenas for all notes, reports, articles, and recordings, whether audio, video, or written, related to Doty's interviews with Brian Kendall and John Joyner. Kendall is currently facing criminal charges in Superior Court related to terroristic threats he allegedly made against former Governor Ben Fitziel back in February. Joyner is a key witness and reported the alleged threats to police at the time. Last March, Doty reported that Joyner sought to publicly clarify and even reverse his earlier statements and that he now believes Kendall should have never been arrested. Kendall is set to go to trial in July, and the government wants Doty's unpublished records to help build its case. But Doty and the Variety are challenging the subpoenas. In a one-sentence email to Attorney General Joey Sinicholas, Doty invoked the reporter's privilege, her right to protect her confidential sources and materials. I suppose that I will gladly uh, surrender myself to the consequences of the court in defense of the constitutional principles of freedom of speech and freedom of the press, unreasonable search and seizure by the government. Obviously, I don't want to go to jail. I have an eight-year-old son and a husband that I, uh, obviously, I want to keep my family together, but they're fully supportive and understand the importance of the principles that are at stake here. Variety publisher Lila Yunus fully backs the reporter. Well, when it comes to cooperating um, with um, investigations and so forth. You know, as a publication, we are willing to uh, cooperate to the extent that of which the material that we have, which is the published articles. All the recordings and the notes belong to the reporter. The CNMI doesn't currently have any laws on the books that protect the rights of journalists to shield sources and information. But Variety attorney Robert Torres says the reporter's privilege is clearly protected by the United States Constitution. Um, the Variety stands on the First Amendment, uh, freedom of the press. If a reporter is forced or compelled to disclose those sources or information or notes, then it would work as a chilling effect to anyone who would want to provide information um, to the press and um, hopefully the Attorney General's office will respect that and we believe that they can achieve the ends of justice um, by other means and we believe that their investigative efforts as a result of this should bear out the facts in the case. Since receiving the subpoena, Doty has reached out to regional and national associations of journalists for support. The issues at stake, she says, are far-reaching. So this isn't about me. It just so happens I got the subpoena. But this is about you and all of us that have to go out every day and try to dig and get the real story to keep the community informed. This is about ensuring that the community has access to information and that we keep that information flowing and our sources have to trust us in order to do that. We asked the Attorney General how far his office intends to pursue the subpoena. Here's what he says. What we're trying to do here is try to balance the need for law enforcement to retrieve uh, very, very important information in ongoing, uh, in, in, in ongoing criminal matters and also to balance it with uh, the need to, to protect uh, the identity or the information that, that a, a reporter may have. So I, I certainly understand where the media is coming from. Um, I, I, I would just ask um, that, that we work together uh, to, to uh, pro as we prosecute uh, these, these, these criminal matters. The reporter in this case and the Variety have invoked the reporter's privilege. They do not intend to turn over notes and things of that nature, um, the audio tape, things like that. Uh, will your office be pursuing that further or, or will you respect that? Um, I, I cannot say at this time what, what, what we will do. Um, I certainly understand the position of the uh, of the particular indiv uh, individual that, that you're talking about. Um, however, uh, we, we also have to uh, seek out information for, for not just this or other other cases. So, um, again, it, it's a work in progress, and um, uh, if, if you know the final decision will, will be made whether we're going to pursue or not, um, but that cannot be divulged at this time. 
This is apparently the first time in CNMI history that the Attorney General's office has subpoenaed a reporter's privilege materials for a pending criminal case. It's not the first time for a reporter to be subpoenaed, however. In 1994, then KMCV reporter Glenn Wakai was threatened with criminal contempt charges if he refused to disclose his source for a story he did on an undercover bust of a karaoke joint that was believed to be a front for prostitution. But at the time, according to Wakai in an email to KSPN, it was not the AG's office that filed the subpoena, but the defendant's attorney. Eventually, the bar's owner and workers pled out, and no charges against Wakai were ever filed.